If you create an application or an API that is secured with Microsoft Intra ID, you're likely gonna require a consumer of your application to provide an OAuth access token in order to access your application or your API. But anyone can create an OAuth access token. It's just a JSON object that has a set schema and then has been base64 encoded. There's nothing really secure about it. If you've elected to use Intra ID to secure your REST API, you have an established trust with Intra ID. And therefore, when you receive an OAuth access token from the caller, you should validate two things. You should validate the token was generated by Intra ID and its contents have not been altered since it was created. And the token is intended to be used only by your API, by me. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do both of these things. Hi, I'm Andrew. If developing custom apps with Intra ID interests you, please hit that like button below the video. It helps me reach more people just like you and grow this channel. And if you're new here, consider subscribing to my channel with the button below the video so you can see when I publish more videos for Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Azure full stack developers. And check out my bi-weekly newsletter where I talk about the same kind of topics and share the most important news in the Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Azure space for full stack developers delivered straight to your inbox. Okay, let's get back to the concept of working with access tokens. As I said, anyone can create an OAuth access token. It's just a JSON object that has, been, has a set schema and then has been base64 encoded. There's nothing secure about it. What legitimizes its use as a security token is that the creator of the token digitally signs the token with a public-private key pair. The creator of the token is gonna to use their private key and they're gonna include the result in the OAuth access token in the JWT format, which stands for JSON Web Token. Now, as I said at the start of this video, in your custom app, you should do two things when you get this access token. You should validate that the token you received was generated by Intra ID and that its contents have not been altered. And you should also validate that the token is intended only by you. Now let's tackle that first part. So how do you validate an Intra ID JOT token? Or more specifically, how do you validate that the JOT token that you received was created by Intra ID and it hasn't been modified? Well, a JOT token is gonna to contain three main sections. The header section that specifies the algorithm that's used to digitally sign the token and the type of the token. The payload, which is the data in the JOT token, which is what we want to work with. And then there's the verification signature. And this is the part that contains the digital signature of the token that was generated by Intra ID's private key. Now, the way you validate that the authenticity of the JOT token's data is by using the Intra ID's public key to verify the signature. And if that works, you know that the contents were signed with the private key. If not, you can't be sure of it, so you should treat the JOT token as an invalid token. So back to the question, how do we validate the Intra ID JOT token? Well, you have a couple different ways you can do this. Now let's start by looking at the manual process of obtaining up the public key. Now you first need to obtain the Intra ID public key. So to do this, you can start by calling the public Intra ID open ID configuration endpoint. That's located at login.microsoftonline.com slash common slash dot well-known slash open ID configuration. When I navigate to that URL, you're gonna see that I'm getting back this JSON object response. Within the JSON response that you see here, you're gonna see a property called JWKS underscore URI. Now that's the endpoint or the URL that contains the JSON web key set for Intra ID. For Intra ID, that URI is login.microsoftonline.com slash common slash discovery slash keys. If I go to that endpoint, that's gonna return a collection of all the public keys that Intra ID uses to sign tokens. Intra ID is actually using the private key that's part of the public-private key pair. The private key is naturally kept secret and never shared, but the public key is shared to any, for anyone to use so that we can validate that the content was digitally signed with the matching private key. So when I go to this endpoint, you're gonna see an array of a whole bunch of keys and each key has a set of properties. Now I'm only interested in a few of these properties, but you can learn all about these different properties from a link that I'm gonna share here at the bottom of the screen. I'm also gonna include it as a link in the description under the video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna submit an HP get request to get a list of all of these keys. Now what I'm looking for is a key that has the same thumbprint of the X509 certificate or the SHA-1 thumbprint that's listed in the header of my JOT token that I got from Intra ID. Wait a minute. How do I get that? So I'm going to use this tool called JWT.io. It's my favorite tool for looking at uh, JWT tokens and easily decoding uh, real tokens. 
So I'm gonna use one that I got from Microsoft Teams app by obtaining the single sign-in token from Microsoft Teams in my app. So I'm gonna to go to jwt.io and I'm gonna paste in a access token that I received from a custom app that I built for Microsoft Teams that's gonna obtain the single sign-on token from Teams that I can use for obtaining other access tokens. So I'm just gonna paste in my access token right here. Now, you can see I have the header section at the top, Here's the payload right below it, and then the verification of the signature. Now, one of the things that this tool is doing, if I open up the dev tools, and if I just come back in, refresh the page, clear everything out, and then scroll back down, and wait for this to finish, and we paste in my token. So what I want you to notice, if I come down here and I paste in the token that I received as a single sign-in token from Microsoft Teams, you'll notice here a couple things. Again, I've got the header part of the JOT token right over here that's been decoded. If I scroll down a bit farther, here's the payload, all the data that's inside of the token, and farther down, there's the signature. If you actually look at the developer tools, you can see that it's going to this open ID, the login at Microsoft Online endpoint for my tenant to go obtain the JWKS uh, URL for the JSON web key set. And it's gonna use that to obtain, so you see here if I go to the pre or the response, there's the JWKS URI. And then if I go to the keys, you'll see a list of all of my keys. So I can see an array of all the keys that are available to me. So this is how the JWTIO app is validating the key. So if I scroll down here to the very bottom, you can see that it says the signature is verified. If anywhere in here I change a value here, you can see the signature is no longer valid because it no longer matches the digital signature that's inside of the signature of the app. Or actually here's the payload right here's the purple part. So if I change a value there, the whole thing is no longer valid. Now let's get rid of that D that we just added. So what I want to do is if I scroll up to the top here, I need this KID thing for the key ID. And you can see some other information here, like the type is a JOT token. The algorithm that's being used is the RS-256 or RSA. And then here is my KID. So I'm looking for one called H9NJ5A. So if I come back over here to the JWKS endpoint, I scroll down, I'm going to find a matching KID, a key ID with that same ID. And what I'm looking for is this value right here, the X5C, that's the X509 certificate. Now, what I'm gonna to wanna to do is grab this value right here, and I'm gonna to wanna to wrap it in some begin and end certific uh, certificate markers. Okay, so now I've got the key, the 509C uh, property, right? And so now what I wanna do is I wanna take that key and I wanna create a certificate out of it. Now's a good time to switch over to the code and let's see how we can go about doing this uh, with some simple JavaScript. So what I'm gonna do is create a new file here uh, test 01. And what I'm gonna do is I've already, in my package.json, I've already installed something called the JSON Web Token Package. So if I come over here to test 01, and let's go through and let's get a reference to that package. Okay, now that I have that, let's go create our key. Now, for the key, what I'm gonna do is I wanna wrap the key in these little markers for this begin certificate and then the end certificate, and I want them to be on, I have uh, be separated by new lines. So what I need to get is that entire um, key and put it right inside of that certificate. So I'll come back over here, I'll take my key that I just found, copy the entire value here, and I'll go ahead and paste it in. Okay, so that's our entire key. Now that we have our key, now let's go load our JSON token, our JOT token. So I'll just use the same JOT token we used in the jwt.io. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and validate it. I'm gonna do that using this JWT tool. I'll call verify, and I'll pass in the access token and the key that I wanna to use to validate that it's valid. Now, what I'll then do is that if it's valid, we should continue, we shouldn't throw an error. So what I'm gonna do is let's pull a property out of, or one of the scopes out of the payload of, of our certificate, and let's write that out. So I'm gonna write out the UPN property from the UPN scope or property from the JOT token. This is commonly like used as like the login for your user account. So for me, this should be my test account. Go ahead, decode a token and it's got a property of preferred underscore username. All right, so let's give it a shot. And here we can see we validated. The token was seen as deemed valid because this JOT verify did not throw any exceptions. If I put something in here that's gonna definitely break this, so let's say I use a different key here. So I'm just gonna delete a little bit of our key and save our changes, and I'm gonna run it again. Now, the next time I run it, you'll notice here, I'm getting an, an, a JSON web token invalid algorithm error here. Because what that's telling me now is there's something about the certificate or the data in the key that's saying that nothing is valid here. 
if I put that back, we can actually see all the values coming back from our token. So now, instead of just doing the URM, let's look at the entire token, save our changes, and now let's go through and rerun it. And now we can see a list of all the different values that we have in our token. So we have a couple things like who the audience is, this is who it is intended for. So I can make sure that this is intended for my intra ID app where I'm accepting the key and I'm, uh, I've created an intra ID app to identify who my app is. This is who the issuer is. IAT is who, what the timestamp was of when it was issued. NBF says when that it was not before, it should not be used before this timestamp. The EXP is this token is only valid until this date. Uh, there's a couple of things that are interesting here. There's the display name, so there's my name. The object ID, that is the unique GUID of my account in my Microsoft Intra ID tenant. The preferred username, this is what I use to log in. That's my Microsoft 365 developer tenant. The scope that I'm using is access as user. So access as user is a permission we use uh, in our Intra ID apps for a custom Microsoft Teams app that wants to support single sign-on. TID, that is the ID of the uh, Microsoft Intra ID tenant where my uh, subscription is set up. I can even drop in another token here that is for that is one that I used to obtain an OBO token uh, using the on behalf of flow to call Microsoft Graph. So let's see if this one will actually validate. Now, what's interesting though, is that you don't have to stop here. You can actually make your life a little bit easier. This isn't the only way to get the public key the way you saw me do it manually by having to look through stuff. Let me show you another way that you could do this. There's another tool that's very popular called the JWKS uh, RSA tool. And what this is, this is gonna allow you to first to create a client where you can pass in the JWKS URI uh, for the endpoint where you wanna go get the key. So this would be, I'd point to the URL that I used in the browser a minute ago to get a list of all the intra ID key sets that were used for signing. Then what I could do is extract the KID from my access token. So that part here, if I go back and look at my access token, it's broken up into three different pieces here. So when you look at your access token, this is how you can look at how things are broken up. The first part of the access token is the header. The second part of the access token is the payload and the third part is the digital signature that you see here. They're separated by a period or by a dot. So what I could do is I could take just this piece right here. I could convert this. I could um, by base 64 decode this because this is a base 64 encoded value. So here I'll just paste in this value and decode it. And there I can go get the KID from this. So I could do that same thing programmatically use that KID pass it in, specify the, um, extract the KID, then use the JWKS client to call get the signing ID by passing in that KID. That gives me back the entire key. And then I can retrieve the public key that we used in the middle of our certificate, this piece that you saw right here. So what I've shown you is here how to take a JOT token and determine if it's a valid token who it came from. That's step one in your validation process. But remember I said there was two validation steps that you wanted to do. At this point, we validated that the token was created by Microsoft Intra ID, who we trust. And now we can see all the values inside of that JOT token. But as I said earlier, you shouldn't stop there. You should then validate the contents of the token are what you expect them to be. Think about it like this. Say you have a house with a single door on it. And in order to gain access to the door, you need to use a key to unlock that door. All we've done so far is to validate it's a real key, but we shouldn't just accept any key to come into our house. We should ensure that the key is valid for this house. So to do this, you need to look at the payload of the JOT token and validate the different properties. These are also known as claims. Remember that AUD claim or audience claim that I mentioned at the beginning of this video? That claim is in the payload and there are a lot of claims that we can validate again. For example, I can validate the audience. That's the intended recipient of the token. For example, if I get a token for Graph, Microsoft Graph will validate the token's AUD claim contains the Microsoft Graph ID. The issuer or ISS, that's the authorization server of the token. In our case, that's gonna be Microsoft Intra ID. That's gonna be the tenant of the user that was authenticated to obtain that token. You could use this property to only support or accept tokens that were submitted from a specific list of tenants and block all the others. There's one called subject, which is SUB. That is the user or the subject of the token. Then I talked about all those time related claims like issued at time and not before time or expiration time. There's also identity related claims about the tenant ID, the object ID, the name of the user, which is a human readable name, 
and the preferred username. But then we have all these security and permission claims. Things like roles for the assigned roles uh, for the user of the claim. Scopes, which is a list of all the permissions or scopes that the user has granted consent to uh, the app that specifies what the token has rights to do. The token type, which is the ID TYP. This is used to indicate that the token is an app token and a user token or a device token. Now there's just one very important point that I really wanna make before we wrap this up. You're gonna to find tons of utility libraries and packages that help simplify this process. I showed you one, the JWKS RSA package. Now my goal in this video was to explain how this process works so you understand what's involved. If you elect to take a dependency on some package that claims it's gonna do it for you, as with any library that you take a dependency on, you better make sure that you verify that that library and you've, you trust the publisher of that library. So what do you think about validating access tokens from IntraID for use in your custom apps? Let me know by dropping a comment below and let me know if you wanna see more videos about using Microsoft IntraID in your custom Microsoft 365 apps. If you like this video, you found it useful, please give me a thumbs up. It helps me grow the channel by reaching more people just like you. And if you haven't already, subscribe by smashing that subscribe button below the video. So you'll see when I publish more videos for full stack developers on Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Azure. I'm Andrew Connell. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video.